off so far. I think he's in the top five in earnings of all time in this season for sure. I think he is the number one earner in terms of prize money yeah, from I, players. I think Yuho might have him just from getting 25000 for winning yeah, the close. Latin America International Championships. But Brent is definitely not far behind, and he is the number one player in uh, championship points so far this season, just ahead of Owen Cameron. And yeah, he's, like you said, been traveling across the world this season. We've seen him time and time again. He's gotten multiple top eights, and most recently, he's coming off of a first place finish at the Melbourne Regional Championships. You know, he travels around the world, but the one that he gets the big win, it, it does end up coming in his home country of Australia. And he also did get second place at the Liverpool Regional Championships not too long ago. In this round, though, he will be going up against Daniel, who is playing that Rapid Strike Urshifu Intellian VMAX. I might actually be the biggest Lysander Trump card hater. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if Daniel I is. Don't, but... I think that's a pretty big club <laughs> yeah. of Lysander's Trump card haters. For those who don't know, it's a, a card from the Phantom Forces expansion years and years ago that inevitably got banned from the standard format just because of how powerful it was. A supporter card that allowed you to shuffle all of the cards from your discard pile back into your deck. Yeah, that uh, ended up being a problem when you combined it with cards like Crushing Hammer and Hypnotoxic Laser at the time. These were not fun things to deal with, and Lysander's Trump card eventually uh, was not allowed to be played any longer. Well, that's a good history lesson. We're here in the present. Daniel is playing that Rapid Strike Urshifu deck, another deck uh, that we are sending a final hoorah for as we exit out of the format. Now, this is a very interesting matchup because Brendis really not gonna wanna play the standard way yeah. he wants with Cup Days. Talk me through how he may wanna set his board up to deal with a deck like Rapid Strike. Yeah, Urshifu. we are probably gonna see several turns of Abyss Seeking at the beginning of games. Usually we see that from Lost Tina anyway. It's not what they want to do, but it's what they end up having to do because that's, you know, that's just how the deck works most of the time. But in this matchup, it's your genuine strategy. Um, the Intellian deck doesn't have, really have a great way to deal with a Giratina V super quickly. This deck is kind of damage capped. It can do 150 with a Gale Thrust, 140 with that Intellian V Max. You can spread some damage with that Double Gunner ability. Uh, but Brent is going to absolutely want to be very mindful of how many small, low HP Pokemon he puts into play. Well, got a lot of dynamics to observe through this matchup. Interesting to see who goes first or second. I feel like Giratina is probably okay to do either at this point. Sure. You know, obviously, as you said, Abyss Seeking on the first turn. But one thing I also have my eyes on are, of course, the prize cards. Yeah. As the tension builds up, the winner of this match will be guaranteed a spot into day two. We do see the Spiritomb prize, a couple of supporter cards. Yeah. Spiritomb's not too relevant in this matchup. It is there for a deck that we put a lot of attention to, the Mew Max deck. It looks like we're going to have a good game, nothing too detrimental. Yeah, the one path for Brent could be a little annoying. That's a pretty nice card to shut down the double gunner from the Intellian VMAX. A bunch of supporters being prized for Daniel definitely could be a problem. You know, as opposed to something like the Lost Zone Toolbox decks that have Kumpe, Radiant Greninja, ways to draw a bunch of cards every single turn outside of your supporter, the Rapid Strike deck has Octillery. It gets you a Rapid Strike card. It's pretty good, but it's not drawing you a bunch of extra cards. So you are really depending on being able to play a supporter just about every single turn of the game. So we'll see if that ends up playing a factor in this one as we are getting underway, and it looks like Daniel will be going first. Does open with that Metacham V into the active spot. And here we go, getting things kicked underway. Round number seven at the Vancouver Regional Championships. We do see this new Earthen Vessel card, a card that sort of has replaced Energy Search in this deck. Discarding cards from your hand, not always the best effect in a deck that doesn't really rely off of that, but it's more than enough for the cost of getting two Water Energy, which pairs great with that Double Gunner ability on the Inteleon VMAX. Yeah, and honestly, putting cards in the discard pile can be a pretty good effect for certain decks. I mean, this is a deck that doesn't really uh, mind discarding things like basic energy. You've got energy retrieval, you've got Clara, ways to get those energy cards back and interact with your discard pile. So it becomes almost a no cost at that point. Uh, and then there are also certain decks, you know, GM Pow likes to discard, you know, energies as well. So you can use superior energy retrievals. There, there are lots of ways that Earth and Vessel can be really powerful. So many people will look at the fact that you have to discard a card and be like, oh, that feels so painful. But in reality, many decks kind of enjoy having that added effect. Yeah, wow, this hand is, I mean, you have the squawk ability. It will be the choice off of this Ultra Ball. 
but a lot of critical pieces are going to hit the play or the discard pile. That second copy of Earthen Vessel already in the hand, so Daniel will not have a lot of ways to search water energies out. That's a very powerful effect to have. It will be the Squawkabilly coming down, which inevitably means Squawk and Seas will be soon to follow. Yes, a very powerful ability, but you can only use it on the first turn of the game. Losing that Octillery definitely could be bad for Daniel. We'll have to see if he's able to find another one on the next turn as Rimmeraid does hit the hand here. And I think I saw a Battle VIP pass. Oh, it's that play Pokemon from those prize series packs coming down into play. Yeah, I think as long as you find three Pokemon on this first turn, you're in a very solid spot. So we do see Urshifu come down into play. The Inteleon V hit the board, and then there is that Remorate in the hand. And Rapid Strike Search, it's the cog that allows this deck to function. Yeah, without a doubt, super important. We'll see that Remorade be benched shortly, and I think there was an Ultra Ball in the hand as well, so that can guarantee the Rapid Strike Search on the next turn. Also a Research. Honestly, Daniel has a pretty strong hand here, even getting an Energy Attachment down to this Urshifu, and we will see that pass. Now, how does Brent Tonneson want to approach things? We'll find out very soon as he's starting with Battle VIP Pass. Checking the deck. We'll see what pieces are available. Now, two notes. The stadium battle back and forth of having stadium control. I mean, with a path to peak prize, it's sort of offset, but you really never want to put Tower of Waters in play as the first stadium because of how crucial Double Gunner is, as well as how yeah. crucial it is to make sure that whatever you need to do is sort of functioning. You just really cannot be slowed down because the more time you give this Lost Tina deck, once it gets to 10 cards in the Lost Zone, they have a guaranteed knockout onto a VMAX Pokemon right. at any point during the game. So that'll be important for Brent. How quickly can he achieve the 10 cards in the Lost Zone? And it'll take a little bit longer than normal because off this Battle VIP pass, a pair of Giratina have been grabbed. No Comfey going down onto the bench. So Brent definitely aware that he needs to adjust his strategy for this matchup. This matchup can be a little difficult for Giratina if you give your opponent a lot of easy targets. Uh, but if Brent plays around the fact that his opponent could use G-Max Rapid Flow, Double Gunner, uh, could use the Yoga Loop on that Metacham V, if he can play around all those pieces effectively, I think he'll be in a solid spot. It's been a solid Colrus, a great way to follow this turn up. Now this is a little bit tough. You got a lot of pieces you want. That is sort of the downside of Colrus's experiment. Got to get them away to the Lost Zone. Yeah, you don't... Um it looks like we are going to see the Super Rod and the Psychic Energy go down. I was going to say, you don't really need to uh, be too concerned with, you know, keeping those Energy Recovery crowns, uh, cards around quite as much as you normally would in some other matchups. We're not going to see as much pivoting, you know, retreating energies off. There's no Radiant Greninja in play at the moment. So you can kind of afford to lose those pieces that are normally really important. And it is indeed going to be the Abyss Seeking here on turn one, thanks to Jet Energy. Pretty textbook start. And a great follow-up for next turn. Let's see what Daniel can put together at this spot. Had to get rid of a pretty sizable amount of resources, but it looks like this follow-up is more than solid. Ultra Ball in the hand, getting rid of this Professor's Research, and that last card, Iono, will shuffle. Brent's large hand had a lot of great resources. That Garatina V-Star in the hand, Colrus, those switch cards, all of these cards extremely key at playing around the math number, especially not as much the pivoting effect of that switch card, but yeah. just the fact that it heals, heals 30 yeah. damage. It's crazy to think that the effect of potion has sort of been upgraded throughout time. Now you get to switch and heal your Pokemon up a little bit. Exactly. Yeah, the Iono here, a really uh, solid play from Daniel. You could have gone with the research and drawn one additional card, but recognizing, hey, my opponent just used Abyss Seeking. Not only do they have a decent amount of cards in hand, but they got to hand pick two of them and add them to their hand. They also just played a Colrus, so they hand picked three of them, sp those specific cards. So you know that your opponent has seen a lot of different options and hand picked exactly what they wanted to do. So Iono Disruption seems really good. Rapid Strike Search to follow. Will search through the deck. Is that Rapid Strike Urshifu is the choice? So this is sort of where we go down sort of this roadmap of what attacks does Daniel want to put on to these active Pokemon on Brent's side. Will we see the Gale Thrust this turn? I believe there's another Rapid Strike Energy in the hand. That would be pretty costly. Discarding uh, two Rapid Strike Energies in mm. order to, to use G-Max Rapid Flow. I think just a Gale Thrust would be okay, but oh my goodness, we are going to see the committal of those extra energy cards, and it is the G-Max Rapid Flow. Gotta say, I'm a little surprised to see this be the option for Daniel. Maybe valuing just 
the amount of pressure that's put on to this Garatina V, especially if you can follow it up with another G-Max Rapid Flow the following turn. It's Melanie true, plus true. Rapid Strike Search to find the Rapid Energy. Yeah, yeah, it could clean up Brent's board pretty quickly, and Brent, forced to put a Comfey into play, needs to try to make something happen. We're going to see this flower selecting after the Jet Energy brings it to the active. Yeah, not much going on in the hand, and not much to assist either. Battle VIP yeah. pass, a good card to put away, but it is just going to be the retreat into this Garatina, and hold on, Chip, a door now opened up. If Daniel can put together a play to knock out both of these Garatina V, yeah, of course you're discarding three of your Rapid Strike yep. energies, but it is at the cost of a huge momentum swing and a four prize turn. And you know what? Daniel already has it guaranteed. Had the Melanie in the hand at the end of last turn, can pretty easily play that supporter card. Another one that's going to rotate out of the standard format. Get that extra energy attached, draw a few cards, and we don't see the Rapid Strike energy, but that is no problem thanks to the Octillery waiting on the bench. We're going to see it, Chip, a four prize turn. And this is just the fourth turn. Of the, this is just the third turn of the game right here. It's pretty crazy <laughs> to see that this this has uh, gotten so aggressive on Daniel's end. Now, taking four prize cards is really strong. But Brent can pretty quickly respond with a Roxanne. And that is something that Daniel probably should take a moment and think about. But honestly, like this is just going to decimate Brent's board. Brent is not going to have hardly anything set up and is going to need to find that third and final copy of Giratina V as well. Yeah, but a key card there found for Daniel did find that four seal stone. So yeah. even if a Roxanne comes out, Brent's not playing any way to remove that four seal stone. And since there's Boom. no threat here, there we go, four prize turn, both Garatina V falling. Daniel Bruner down to just two prize cards left on the third turn of the game. Let's we'll see what Brent Tonneson can piece together. A few Mirage Gate in the hand, that's not really useful. You don't want to put too many energy cards on your come phase. It can be nice to get some retreat options, so we will see that be played. But yeah, Brent is not even going to be able to really do too much this specific turn, probably just ending with a Cram Ramp most likely, and uh, hoping to find a Giratina V. Only one left in the deck. You've only got those Nest Balls as ways to search out your Giratina. Does also have Path to the Peak, so... That's pretty good. It's a very good disruption ability. Does yeah. not shut off the Forest Seal Stone, however. Uh, will turn off the Double Gunner, which is nice, but Forest Seal Stone, like you pointed out, Ethan, is going to be a pretty quick and easy response for Daniel to get whatever piece he wants, depending on what he draws into. And of course, not only can he get any card he wants off the Forest Seal Stone, he can get any Rapid Strike card he wants, thanks to Octillery. So shuffling in, Brent will get six cards, Daniel just two, but it was more than worth the cost of getting disrupted at this point. So the question here, what can Brent put together does find that nest Huge. ball, and that is the big card to find. Garatina V can come into play, and we've seen comebacks from this Garatina deck. It feels like that's what it excels at, is starting out behind. Maybe you have to abyss seeking the first few turns, really just not do much, but Path Roxanne, tried and true combo in the standard format currently. Yeah, some people think that's the true combo. Some people think it's a lie. We'll see what ends up happening as this game uh, is getting down to the final stages. Brent still has quite a few things to do this turn. We're going to see that flower selecting, losing the Radiant Greninja with Path in play. Its value goes down quite a bit, so definitely want to value the Sableye over that. And we are going to see the retreat, and it looks like another flower selecting. What could Brent be de uh, digging for? And it actually looks like the answer is nothing, because we are going to see the retreat and spit innocently. And the counter catcher to get rid of the Octillery. That is a massive find here for Brent. It'll take him one prize card, but also take away Daniel's main consistency engine. Yeah, with how things stood, uh, four Sealstone plus the Rapid Strike Surge could find the stadium out to allow you to retreat and the Rapid Strike energy. But now, because there's only one Rapid Strike energy in play, it's going to be very hard to find that resource, which all these Pokemon really need to attack in a pretty efficient manner. So here we go. Four Seal Stone used that Star Alchemy V Star Power. And I think for Daniel, this could be pretty awkward because he doesn't have a Professor's Research in the deck. He has two copies in his list. We saw one hit the discard pile earlier, and the second copy is in his final two prize cards. So while Four Seal Stone can get him any one thing that he would want, something like Research would be so good to be able to just discard your hand and fill it back up with seven. He doesn't have that play available. 
And lots of choices. We could see Clara grab the water energies back, but then you're not attacking that turn. Exactly. It looks like it will be the card in here only because it could be Rapid Strike Search. It is that Karina's Focus, a pretty subpar supporter card, but it's worth it when you have Octillery set up and just saying, look, I don't have the ability to reestablish Octillery efficiently. I'm going to bench this Radiant Alakazam and maximize my draws. What do we see off of this? We do Five see cards. a Water Energy, but no Rapid Strike Energy. This Inteleon is now stuck in the active spot, and with Brent having a Giratina V down and a pretty solid amount of Lost Zone cards, or rather cards in the Lost Zone, things could get very scary here if something like this Rapid Strike Urshifu is unchecked. That is another threat, though, of yep. course, now having no bench Pokemon. There is no Manaphy in Brent's list, so lots of factors to think about. Brent is not out of this by any means, though. Definitely not out of it, but it really, at this point, with that energy being attached to the Urshifu, is just going to be a waiting game. You know, how long does it take for Daniel to find a Rapid Strike energy? He will also need to find a way to retreat his active, so maybe Brent could work out something like, you know, a Sableye play, let that be the attacker. He is able to find a Mirage Gate here. Also, Brent at some point could potentially find Counter Catcher in order to bring up that Urshifu and use the Star Requiem V-Star power to just knock it out. It looks like it will be a Sableye angle for now as Mirage Gate does get the energy attached to it. Now, what are we going to see Brent target down here? It is quite the road back into this game. I think Brent will probably try and set up a knockout on the Squawkabilly and also put this Inteleon in Lost Impact range. If he can do that, potentially even putting the Urshifu into Lost Impact range, the only downside is it's really not worth it to Star Requiem to take a knockout onto this Inteleon because yeah, you don't want to give the free pivot to this Rapid Strike Urshifu. Right, yeah, I think he wants this Inteleon to be stuck active for as long as possible. And we do see the Pokegear finding a Roxanne after Daniel just filled the hand back up. Roxanne in a future turn could be really strong to limit that again. Actually, no, just this turn has not even played a supporter yet, so we will still be able to see the Roxanne be utilized here countering the fact that Daniel just found the supporter card last turn. And this game has flipped completely upside down. This is what happens when you have to go through a lot of your supporter cards and you don't have the flexibility of Octillery. There's nothing like Jirachi in here to prevent against Lost Mine. So here so we go. The Big two cards. Let's see how this goes out. Sableye can target a whole bunch of different Pokemon, but it's really going to be on what Daniel can find from these two cards from Roxanne. If Sableye can just fire off Lost Mines over and over again, yeah. then that can be a completely game-winning strategy. Yeah, Brent is going to want to think about his prize map here a little bit. There's a few options with five prize cards remaining. You could target down the one Radiant Alakazam and then two two-prize Pokemon. You could target down one single two-prize Pokemon and then aim to just finish the game by KOing a three-prize Pokemon. So. He, he's starting off by targeting down a two-prize Pokemon, and we'll see where it goes from there. Found Melanie off the rock sand, but nothing off of those three cards drawn. Another battle VIP pass. There's three, three of those VIP pass. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I bet you Daniel's thinking, oh, come on, can this card just, like, be out of the format so I don't have to have my <laughs> hand clogged up by these? And it's just going to be a pass back over. Brent can now take, essentially, a free two-prize cards on this Metacham, and then Star Requiem can clean up any VMAX Pokemon Daniel maybe put on a one-turn clock to see if yeah. he can take these final two prize cards. It's definitely true, and Brent actually does have boss's orders in his hand currently, and with the energy card being attached to this Intellion this last turn, I would not hate to see boss's orders try to stick something else in the active spot, and Radiant Alakazam is a great choice. This card is so powerful in the Urshifu deck, but it also can be a little bit of an Achilles heel. It is really difficult to move if your opponent can do something like this and try to stick it active for a few turns. So here we go. We're gonna see the Lost Mine. We'll see two damage counters put onto this Radiant Alakazam. Yeah. It does put it in Cramorant range, so smart line, and then just throwing that last damage counter onto the Rapid Strike Urshifu V Max. And we just got ourselves a game here. There is nothing that can be played in this hand. Pokemon Devolution. Just a pass. Wow, not what you want to see at all. And this Brent has just been able to have this Lost Mind Sableye sit in the active and place damage counters wherever he so pleases. Yeah, and 
Brent can set up a win in just a couple of turns. You can target down the Squawkabilly with the Lost Mine and set it up so you can knock out both the Squawkabilly and the Alakazam. But no is going to choose to try to get through the deck a little bit more, wants to reestablish things. What could, what do you think he's uh, he's looking for right here by using the Flower Selecting? Well, Brent can win this turn if he can find Boss's Orders and it's true if he finds his last Star boss, Requiem yeah. onto one of these benched VMAX Pokemon and has that Poke Gear in the hand. So if Brent can sequence everything, he's going to play the, the Super Rod, put just the one Psychic Energy in the deck, and there is a boss's orders. How many cards are there? It looks like there's nine cards in this hand. Pretty high odds to just close it out here. And I think it's actually 100% guaranteed because Switch Cart can put into this Comfey, Flower Selecting can bring him down to just a seven card deck, and then yep. Poke Gear is guaranteed to hit this boss's orders. Yep. Let's see if he does oh, this. He's no. going for the Poke Gear first. Let's see if he just hits and just closes things out. He doesn't hit. Didn't he have it? I'm pretty I don't sure know he has it retreat. I don't know oh, if oh, he, he has retreated a... the Sableye, my bad. Yeah, so he's the already Sableye retreated, retreated for turn. this turn. Yep. Okay. So, wow, an unfortunate miss there in the bottom two cards of the he deck. He could still win, though. There is Counter Catcher in his deck still. Five cards off the Colrus, and there is the Counter Catcher, but I guess there is no Switch Cart. I think he has the, oh, he has the Switch Cart in hand. Okay, yeah, yeah, he's there. got it. Yeah, switch card. Even Brent taking a moment there does realize he has the win. Counter catcher brings up any of the VMAX Pokemon and that Star Requiem V Star Power able to take the KO. What a comeback from Brent in that game. That's what Garatina does best. Path rocks in. You can think it's a lie. I think the numbers, the stats show right here. Look at the look at the match and tell me what you think at home. But that's what you have to do in this matchup. Yep. You understand that. It's sort of a trap against this Garatina deck. Garatina sort of tempts you with that. They say, look, I'm doing nothing. My start is so slow. Come on, take these knockouts. Put yourself down to two or three prize cards. And I mean, this was an incredible tempo play. I mean, we don't see many decks take four prize cards on the third turn of the game. But I really have to wonder, that second Rapid Strike energy putting this Pokemon into play. I feel like if the water energy was there, maybe this play makes a little bit more sense. But without Rapid Strike Search and with only having one Rapid Energy in your deck, it becomes very hard to pull off attacks when you're getting hand disrupted and when your artillery is also getting targeted. Yeah, and this was the start of the comeback for Brent. The Roxanne plus the Counter Catcher getting rid of that artillery super key and then yeah, this Alakazam being stuck in the active. The turns previous, the Intellium being stuck in the active. Brent was able to just set things up pretty nicely and gave himself a pretty good shot to win this game here with the Poke Gear finding that counter catcher and was able to just close things out thanks to Giratina V-Star. Game two underway. I mean, that felt like a long match, but it really didn't take too, too long of time. So. Hey, look, we see how fast the Rabbit Strike deck goes. We see sort of how methodical the Giratina deck can be towards the end. This could be anybody's game, and Brent is more than happy to take a few mulligans. We'll take a look and see what these prize cards look like for Brent. I was very happy to have that third Giratina V. Could have been a completely different game. I feel like on stream, we always see those Giratina V end they up in the prize cards. They love to hang out in the prize cards. Maybe they, you know, equate that to the distortion world a mm. little bit, right? Think that's where they belong, but... No, we want Giratina to be in the deck. We want it to come out to play and uh, be a part of the game itself. Daniel did have to mulligan, had no basic Pokemon in his opening hand, so he's going to have to reshuffle that deck and hopefully find a basic Pokemon here. He would have not minded to keep that hand. I did notice two Battle VIP pass in it. That's always a little bit of a, you know, a fist shake moment. Oh, why couldn't I have just started with this? But that's how it works. And we'll see if he can still find one as he has now gotten a basic. Daniel will be going first again. We do see two of those Grass Energy in the prize card, so only having one does have one of those Rapid Strike Energy prized. I think we're going to have another good game, Chip. So let's get down to the table. Game number two between Dan and Brent. And oh, this hand is four supporter cards that cannot be played. And this is going to be a costly Ultra Ball at this point. Does have the four Seal Stone, so the big question is, do you use that this early? We saw how beneficial it was after the Roxanne. But is it worth that trade-off of having a better board early compared to having some protection later on in the game? Yeah, that's the big question here that Daniel has to ask. It would be nice to just go get a battle VIP pass and get yourself fully set up. Uh, and he may still choose to do that. We'll see if Daniel maybe has a bit of a strategy adjustment as well. I wouldn't hate for Daniel to take a moment and think about how that game one went and think, mm, maybe I need to slow it down on my prize card taking a little bit. I mean, 
There's nothing forcing you to knock out those Giratinas, right? You could yeah. just kind of poke them with your Intellium VMAX or Urshifu, whatever it may be, and then set up for maybe a more powerful multi-prize turn later on. We'll see how things adjust, though, for Daniel. And he is grabbing the Squawk ability right away. Yeah, it looks like, again, a very costly Squawk and Seize on turn one. We're going to see four supporter cards hit the discard pile, and we saw how much Dan wanted those at the end of the game. And just because so many were went through, because so many were in the prize cards, did not have access to that. But really going to be looking to find some basic Pokemon. Does have the bailout of at least having the four Seal Stone, but these are going to be a big six cards. Urshifu V, but that's it when it comes to Pokemon. No Rimmerade. Yeah, the Rimmerade is the big one you, you hope to find here. So is it going to be worth popping that Forest Seal Stone to go get a Rimmerade into play this turn? Looks like the answer is going to be yes. There it is, Star Alchemy. We'll find the battle VIP pass, and Rimmerade is the given. There is that option for a second Pokemon to come into play. Yeah, probably just another Intellium V seems pretty solid. Don't mind having a few of those set up. You can threaten the Double Gunner pretty quickly. Uh, Brent, on the other end, did start the Sableye. Honestly, Sableye, it does have one retreat. You know, you can move it around, but it's a pretty annoying starter. Uh, it clogs up your board in the early game. You really don't want to see it come into play until you've got those 10 cards in the Lost Zone. So, um, you know, Comfey and Sableye may look similar to some, but Sableye is not the one that you want to be putting into play early in the game. And finding that water energy there, as long as you're getting an energy drop onto that Urshifu, that is important. Rapid flow without taking prize cards, I think that's a very solid strategy, and I like. Daniel's still going for that early, but maybe not as aggressively might be a little bit Yeah, maybe not when you're giving up two. The, the big thing was that he gave up two Rapid Strike energy to do that. Yeah. Did, have, did put those water energy in the discard pile. Now, it is sort of a double-edged sword, right? You can get that off energy retrieval, but you can't really draw into them. You're going to have a lot less outs finding your water energy. So we'll see Garatina V get grabbed, and it is the Radiant Greninja this time, so maybe signaling a little bit weaker of a hand on Brent's side, may not have a supporter card, or maybe many ways to move the Sableye out. Looks like, yeah, just a bunch of energy. Yeah, I don't see much there. I think there may be a Jet Energy, so as long as you're using Abyss Seeking, that's great, but you'd like to also be playing your Coles' Experiment, slowly building your way up to the top, up to those 10 cards in the loss zone. Yeah, shuffling the deck now. We'll be able to use the Radiant Greninja to draw a couple. Probably hoping for a Colrus here. That would be nice. Needs to find a way to get Giratina active. We'll see if there is a Jet Energy in the hand. I do see one, so that is good. And Concealed Cards can draw a couple. Hoping to find some Colrus options, and that's a couple of Giratina. Honestly, getting another Giratina is not too bad, but maybe we'll see the adjustment from Brent not putting two Giratina in play right away so that we don't see a repeat of game number one, because that did put on a lot of pressure. Yeah, the only downside to doing this is if your opponent plays something like Iono, that can be tough. And these are all yeah, you got Nest Ball, you got plenty of time. Yeah. Lots of ways to get more Giratinas in play in the future. It does have to throw that boss's orders away, but had to value keeping that switch card and the course. <laughs> and you see Daniel showing that top card. Yeah, it would have been nice the, the previous IP turn. Pass. Yep. Didn't quite have it, though, and uh, is able to play the Iono. That is solid, especially after having to discard so many supporters to start the game off. Looking for the Rapid Strike Energy or the Octillery, and was at least able to find the Rapid Strike Energy so we can see an attack be pulled off this turn. And with no path to peek in play, we also can see that Double Gunner put some pressure onto these lower HP Pokemon on the bench. Yeah, the damage on the Greninja is nice. It puts it in G-Max Rapid Flow Range. Sableye, you can eventually Yoga Loop it as well, yeah, so exactly. it's not too bad. So here we go. G-Max Spiral, 140 damage onto Garatina V. Brent did find that Colrus after being Ionoed, so we'll build this Lost Zone up to 4-6 if he decides to use Abyss Seeking at the end of this turn. But this is where it's tough, is you can Abyss Seeking build your Lost Zone up, but you're pretty yeah. much surrendering two prize cards to your opponent. Well, that's what you got to do, turn. you know. I mean, Giratina is a come-from-behind deck at the end of the day, right? You've got all these counter catchers, the Iono, or Roxanne's, excuse me, all in this list. And Brent was able to find another Giratina V, so that is pretty strong. Isn't going to be pressured by having both of his Giratinas wiped out, and also Path to the Peak is pretty nice to put into play. And caps it all off with an Abyss Seeking to increase the size of the Lost Zone once again. We'll see Path and Jet Energy. The other options were Jet Energy and a Counter Catcher. So I think it yeah. makes sense. It definitely hurts to lose both of those cards. You do enjoy having access to both of them. But 
counter catcher is pretty important. I mean, we saw how massive that was for Brent in game number one. Yeah, playing a pretty unconventional counts. Most players usually play a total of three gusting cards, whether that's two counter catcher and a boss or two boss and a counter catcher. Brent's playing four total gusting cards. Right. Yeah, that little extra aggression. I like having the two boss because you're not always losing and it can let you close out the game at the end. Uh, and I also, of course, like having two counter catcher because you often are losing to start the game off. So it gives you plenty of options. So yeah, Brent is really kind of stuck with this like 58, 59 cards of this 60 card list for the last few tournaments. I mean, it's paid off for him. He won the Melbourne Regional Championships with the Giratina deck. We've seen him have deep runs at multiple other events with this archetype. And he's looking to make that happen here in Vancouver as well. Squawkin seizing away that Octillery early on, actually coming to benefit Daniel here. Can play this Clara, grab that Octillery back, good, yeah. and finally, Rapid Strike Search is online. We've seen both abilities now get used. There is already a Rapid Strike Energy in the hand, so we could see this grab one of those Inteleon VMAX or that Rapid Strike Urshifu. Yeah. Because of that Rapid Strike energy. Uh, yeah, I kind of like grabbing the Intellium VMAX here. You've already got so many basic energy in your hand, especially because Clara just added two more to your hand as well in order to get the Octillery back. So get value from the Double Gunner while you can before your opponent puts another Path to the Peak into play. And that Sableye is now really close to being, uh, being KO'd. So there it is, second Double Gunner ability. Garrett, <laughs> Brent just giving away some information here. Sometimes these players like to shuffle their hand up a little bit, get a little bit antsy at the table, but can't let your nerves get the best of you. You're at 5 0 1. You're in a great spot here to get into day two of the regional championships. And here's the choice now for yeah. Dale. Do you take a knockout onto this Garatina V? This is again playing around Roxanne. This first knockout, I think, is okay, but you've got to really in your head navigate. How am I taking these last prize cards? Yeah. Can I yoga loop and take knockouts? What can I do so I can try and play around Roxanne to the best of my ability? Yeah, and I like this. Not taking the knockout. Set it up so you can do something next turn or in the future maybe, you know, use the escape rope you have and then double gunner to KO the Giratina. Use something like the Radiant Alakazam to KO it. Uh, you know, to try to take multiple prizes in a turn similar to what he did in the last game. Uh, yeah, we'll see exactly how he approaches things. I definitely want to see him try to play around the Roxanne. Take two prizes, hold off on taking the next one until maybe you can piece together a four prize turn. That's really what you like to do with this Urshifu deck. All three cards in Daniel's hand is just water energies. Yep. Just has three water energies to work with, so maybe you bluff a little bit. You're like, yeah, my hand's good. I got three cards, but uh, size is not in the numbers. What can Brent do? Now, Brent has had a few turns to build his hand up. We have seen Abyss Seeking plus two Colruses in a row. So there's lots of resources, and now up to eight cards in the Lost Zone. Yep. So Mirage Gate is online. And what will Brent do with this turn? Uh, we could have seen Brent, if he had the Garatina V-Star, go in and maybe Lost Impact that, but that can be risky when your opponent showed that they play that Professor Turo scenario, which can essentially act as a way to just heal one of your Pokemon up. It would be at the cost of discarding a Rapid Strike energy, but that seems like a good trade-off in my mind. Yeah, not too bad at all. Here's the concealed cards. And does find the nest ball. So what is Brent looking for to get into play? And it is going to be a Kumfe. Yeah, wants to dig a little bit more with this. Has so many cards in the hand currently. Yeah, so I think this will actually put Brent up to 10 cards yeah. in the loss zone. And we're going to so. see that Sableye be pulled off this turn and will be able to target down. I assume the Octillery, you know, getting that out of play is pretty important. The, the Urshifu deck's power level just decreases so much when it doesn't have access to Rapid Strike Search every single turn. So let's see. And also, this will be a switch cart being played, which will heal up this Giratina, making it a little more difficult for Daniel to pick up the KO. He should still be able to piece something together. But yeah, this is going to get nine cards in the Lost Zone. Choosing to get rid of that Colrus might feel painful, but in favor of keeping Path to the Peak, that is another card Brent would really like to play this turn, especially because he has the knowledge at least one of the cards in his opponent's hand is a basic water energy. Lots of costly Lost Zone choices, but you've got to value some cards over yep. the other. It's the nature of this Lost Zone deck. As Magic number 10 achieved for Brent, lost mine online. We saw how great it was to get Octillery out of play in game one. Brent's going to do the exact same thing and even can evolve this Garatina V yeah. up into a V Star, adding 100 HP to this Pokemon, uh, putting it up to 280. 
So that will now get a 60 HP boost, and we'll just see that last damage counter put onto this Urshifu V. Brent Tonneson, the one to take the lead in this matchup. Hey, that's not a bad top deck, though, for Daniel. Did find the Karina's focus. It's not a great supporter, right? Like you mentioned in game number one, it's only in here because you can search it off of the Rapid Strike search. But hey, it's better than three basic water energy. He'll at least be able to draw some cards. And after attaching a water energy somewhere, we'll be able to draw even more. Yeah, and the 60 damage on this Sableye is really awkward, to be honest. And we see actually not attaching this energy card because there might be a chance to maybe Yoga Loop this turn true. and put in a little bit more value rather than essentially wasting three of your double gunner targets onto something that you're just going to knock out for 140 regardless. And this is a situation where if Daniel didn't have to flip the V-Star marker on turn one of the game, it would be really nice to have the answer to that. You know, you're... Octillery just got KO'd. Now you have the perfect response by being able to get any one card to get yourself reestablished. But Daniel was forced to use that in the early turn of the game in order to get his board set up so that we could get to at least this point. And now the choice. What do you want off of this Ultra Ball? The scary thing here is if you put another Emirate into play, your opponent could have just something like Super Rod to put Sableye back and target that down while maybe putting pressure on your VMAX Pokemon to be in range of something like Lost Impact, but you see this deck really struggles to function without Octillery. Yeah. It's got to be Daniel's priority, and it will be the choice off this Ultra Ball. Yeah, got to try to reestablish it, and then obviously the Sableye will be going down with this play from Daniel. Feels bad to waste a little bit of the damage, right? 60 damage that's been built up on the Sableye, not really being able to maximize the potential of what it could be, but... You are able to return this energy, which means if you can find, say, a Tower of Waters next turn, we could see Yoga Loop come into play maybe onto one of these Comfes if, if Daniel can pull some stuff off with a Radiant Alakazam and some Double Gunner plays. We'll see how everything progresses out. French will start things off with a Chorus' Experiment. So I believe that may actually be the last copy of Chorus as one did hit the Lost Zone. Yeah, it's true. I think that is correct. Yeah, that adds up to three here. Plenty of Switch cards. Also the Counter Catcher. Counter Catcher's not live right now. And so Brent is going to choose to get rid of that. That's normally something that can be really powerful moving forward, but I think Brent is recognizing he's potentially going to jump ahead here in the next few turns and might have a hard time utilizing that card. And this is great, can do it with a pretty much fresh Garatina V. V-Star, rather, not in range of anything like Devolution to knock it out, not in range of anything to take a one-hit knockout. I do think he needs to find the V-Star. I'm not sure there was one in the hand. Wow. And he is able to hit it off of the flower selecting, massive to find. And this will be that Star Requiem coming out, V-Star power. You only get to use one a game, and this is one of the best in the entirety of the game. Just taking a KO on whatever your opponent's active Pokemon is, and in this position, getting Brent three prizes. And that Squawk ability on the bench is looking prime to be the final two prize cards. Brent will need to secure this, filling the bench up, playing the cards out, and there it is, Star Requiem knocking out Inteleon VMAX, Brent Tonneson, two prize cards away from locking a spot up in day two here in Vancouver. Daniel is going to promote the Urshifu, needs some help. The draw for turn was another Rapid Strike energy, not super strong. You already have one in hand, but can play the Arvin here, getting any item card and any tool card out of the deck. Looks like there are some devolution at this point, so find that technical machine item card. It's not going to do much here, nah. of course. Not going to be able to knock out that Garatina V star. It is just out of range on the bench. But it can become discard fodder. You know, it's not useful in this matchup, so you can discard it with the Ultra Ball that was grabbed. And this can re-establish the Octillery. He's actually going to choose to get the Urshifu. Was the other Octillery in the deck? Yeah, sure. Normally, you'd like to just get the Octillery because then the Octillery can find the Urshifu, right? Yeah, right after. exactly. And this could be Daniel maybe, maybe feeling are. some of the pressure here and just thinking, you know what? My back's kind of against the wall here. I really don't know what to do because even with a G-Max Rapid Flow here, you're still at worst staring down a Garatina V-Star that can throw off another attack. And Brent has a massive hand, just needs a few pieces to close the game out on the following turn. It's just up to Daniel. What do you do here? We'll see Metacham V come down. I mean, Daniel can win the game next turn if Brent doesn't win this turn. 
Yeah. Uh, he's going to damage the active Giratina and then knock out the one on the bench. He's going to go down to three prize cards left. If he can find Melanie and Urshifu next turn, but not going to get a next turn. Brent Tonneson has the energy and the boss's orders to KO either the Metacham or that Squawkabilly EX on the bench. And Brent Tonneson locks up a spot in day two with a 6-0-1 record. Playing tried and true, it's the deck he won a regional championship with Garatina V Star 2 0, taking down Rapid Strike Urshifu V Max. And Tonneson on his way to potentially win a US regional. Henry Brand did it last season. See if. Brent can follow in his Australian countrymen's footsteps <laughs> and sort of invade invade into other countries and take down some regional yeah. champions. He's already been doing it all year. Hasn't gotten the win outside of his home country. We'll see if he can make it happen, though. Here in Vancouver, getting a win in Canada and Melbourne in the same season would be pretty wild as we are seeing this replay here. G-Max Rapid Flow able to take that four prize turn in game number one. Seemed like it was putting Daniel in a great spot, but ultimately this was his downfall, activating Roxanne for Brent, and he found the perfect combination of comeback cards to get back into this game. It all starts with Roxanne. Great comeback, start with great comeback cards. And it was just that Radiant Alakazam. I mean, Daniel had to bench it to really maximize that draw, but I don't really think that one extra card was worth putting that sort of liability of a Pokemon. You've got no real way besides that Turo, which was discarded to move it out of the active spot. Yeah, the one escape rope being the only yeah. other option, and it's really difficult to find that one of card. And Brent had the game-winning combo, counter catcher, switch cart, and using that V-Star power. And yeah, VMAX Pokemon are really strong, but they give up three prizes. We've sort of seen them take a backseat unless they're able to really outweigh the benefits of some of these V-Star Pokemon in the format. That's just sort of how the meta has shifted over time as Pokemon get more and more powerful. Different strategies affect how players play their games out. And it was some good early aggression from Daniel putting on damage counters under these Urshifus. But at the end of the day, Garatina V-Star reigns supreme. Brent Tonneson, 6-0-1, undefeated so far, looking to secure himself a spot in the top eight cut tomorrow. We've still got plenty more Pokemon to play. We've still got two more Swiss rounds for today, but every single match point counts when you're in fields. This is not one of our bigger regional championships throughout the year. We've got a little under a thousand players competing throughout our Masters division here, the division that we've been following throughout this entire weekend. You still need a very, very solid record to get through. Most of the time, you're still looking at 34, 35 match right. points. And this is where your mental has really got to be tough. Just because you win the first six or five or six rounds, right? Just because you're already at 19 match points, can't let up yet. You've still nope. got to really capitalize on these next two matches and try and put yourself in on a good spot where you're usually looking at at least 22-ish match yeah. points to really be in a solid position. You want to lock up as many match points in day one as possible because it just makes your day two so much easier. It takes a lot of stress off. Uh, you can afford to drop a couple of rounds throughout the rest of the tournament if you want to make it in the top eight, but you would rather drop them in day two where theoretically the competition maybe will be a little stiffer. Um, if you can just pick those those up in day one and not worry about taking any more losses, even though if Brent did lose these next two rounds, he would still make it to day two. You know, want to just cash in on the match points as quickly as possible, really. And he's no stranger to this stage. I mean, a day two for a lot of people, it's a great accomplishment. It's something to be excited for. 